and some types of trauma that people don't often realize is, for example, domestic violence. That can be trauma, a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we know about the bridge collapsing in Baltimore. Oh, that is a traumatic experience, um, not only for the nation, but more importantly for those families and individuals that witnessed that in Baltimore. Um, a chronic illness can also be some level of trauma if you don't have the mm. proper support and resources to manage it. I'm going to throw out another one. Throw them out. All right. It's called vicarious trauma. Mm -hmm. Vicarious trauma. Spill so what that? I, I, ain't, I ain't no dictionary, <laughs> but I know what it means, and I'm, I can explain that. Yeah, but what it means is, I I'm gonna give you an example. Okay. The bridge. Mm -hmm. I saw videos of the bridge collapsing, the ship hitting, the bridge collapsing, the cars falling in the water. Mm. I live nowhere near Baltimore. But if I, every time I go over a bridge, I start to have a trauma response, meaning my heart heart starts mm -hmm. racing. Um, I start to sweat, right? Uh, racing thoughts, different things like that. Guess what just happened? I was indirectly impacted by a traumatic event that was experienced by someone else. Mm. That's what vicarious trauma is. So mm. you don't have to directly experience it, but you just seeing Second it hand. happened secondhand, mm. you can actually be traumatized from that particular experience. Now, so I'm not saying, you know, me personally, but that's just an example. Now, after watching the bridge collapse, if you have an issue with driving over bridges and you become real anxious and things like that, then next thing you know, you're experienced by that trauma. Mm. So, yep. I feel like avoidance is like Welcome back, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to Speaking with Gravity. Uh, I'm your host, Joshua Williams. Yes. Hey, guys. I'm Hannah Williams. And Terrence Dawkins. That's right. That's right. May 16th uh, is episode seven of this uh, of this eighth season of Speaking with Gravity. So so gracious to have y'all back with us. We're going to be talking about something uh, something really, uh, really important. Of course, all the topics are important. But we're talking about getting through it, right, y'all? Transcending trauma. Transcending trauma. When I looked up transcend, transcend can be defined as surpassing or going beyond. Surpassing or going beyond. So we have these events, these traumatic situations in our life, and we want to talk today about going beyond that, right? What's on the other side of it, right? And how, how do we go? How do we go beyond it, right? Um, and so talking about, for one, I think what's important is, um, I guess for, first of all, y'all, we talk about transcending trauma. Do y'all have uh, either a personal experience? either a personal experience or an experience from your line of work in mm -hmm. therapy and counseling. Uh, that's a good example of transcending trauma. Yeah, I can, I can start. Um, I know that we all have experienced grief and grief can bring some level of trauma. Mm -hmm. I know in my personal life, um, I went through um, a period of time when I was only a teenager where I lost five close people to me within five years. Mm. Um, so these were like people very close to me. And looking back at it, I had changed as a person. Grief had changed me as a person. Um, but it was more so the trauma that I was enduring, you know, losing one person. Then a couple of months later, finding out um, I had lost someone else. So during that small period of time, just losing so many people close to me um, to death, that created a level of trauma that I did not even know at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I transcended it. I transcended through that time of that traumatic experience by reaching out to the people I love um, that were able to support me more, but also by seeking professional help um, and just keeping their memories alive. I think that was one coping mechanism that I was able to just feel better and feel more okay on the inside by keeping my loved one's memories alive. What did you get the motivation to seek professional help? I'm curious about that. I didn't have the motivation. Um, somebody <laughs> had to encourage me <laughs> to seek professional help. And the first couple of times I denied it, like, hey, I can just get through this. Um, it's not new to me. You know, I can just work through it, um, cry through it, laugh through it, travel through it. But somebody encouraged me um, to seek professional help, and that was really the best thing I could do to help um, 
helped get through that time in my life. When they encouraged you, I'm sorry, I'm going to, when they encouraged you, what was your thoughts? What was your thoughts? My thoughts were that I was so comfortable in grief. I was so comfortable in living in that trauma at the time that I wasn't ready for change initially. Mm. Um, it took, it just took time for me to understand that I needed professional help. Mm. Okay. So. Okay. So, so after they told you about it, it maybe it took a little bit more time before you actually went and went went and pursued it. Did it take mm -hmm. them, you know, continuing to you know uh, tell you about what it was doing for them, or mm -hmm. like what what did it take for you to actually take that step? I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, Cause I, think I took I, I think it was just me being tired of you know mm -hmm. being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. um, you come to that point where you don't want to burst, and you know you don't want your cup to overflow mm -hmm. so much. That in order to just, like I said, feel better on the inside and be more active. I wasn't even present mm -hmm. um, during that time in my life. I was just existing, but I was not present in the moment. Um, and I had missed who I used to be. So I'm like, you know what? That was my, my, my waking up moment. Like, I want to get back to who I was before I experienced um, the death of uh, a close friend to two grandparents, um, another close friend, a great-grandparent. That all happened within a small period of time. So I was like, I want to get back to the feeling and the person I used to be before these experience, experiences happen. Terrence, I'm curious, but I'm curious what you have to say. But um, also, I think it's important. Uh, can we define trauma real quick? Um, I know. So I'm not a mental health professional, right? And, uh, again, you know, the, the things... I guess said and done on this show shouldn't be taken as mental health professional help, right? But I think it is helpful, right, to mm -hmm. have you out here who are actually in the practice of mental health. So can you help us to define trauma? Yeah, uh, some people will define trauma as, you know, like a specific uh, event or a series of events that's had some type of uh, impact on you or lasting impact on you. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I also like to define trauma. I add a little bit to it. It's not about what happened to you. Uh, it's, ha it's about what happens inside of you, really. Mm -hmm. Because with trauma, trauma is, is, is a, has a biological response, mm -hmm. meaning it, your body automatically does it. Mm -hmm. So as there's parts of your brain that is that's triggered, that sends different chemicals to another part of your brain that then sends your body into what they call a trauma response. Mm. I'm not going to start naming the you know brain parts and stuff like that because this is a, a biology class or anything like that. But just know that you know chemicals are releasing your body to help your body mobilize and survive. Mm -hmm. And when you experience you know certain events, your body will think it's in a trauma. Uh, a pretty much a, mm -hmm. a dangerous state and start releasing those chemicals when you even though you're not you're safe but your body is telling you we're not safe so we need mm. to defend ourselves yeah. so it's not just about the event it's about how your body responds to the event because now when another event comes like that that where you you know you're safe but your body doesn't mm -hmm. trauma response so it's not just about what happens to you it's what happens inside of you mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and just a feedback off of that um that was a great point and within our bodies a lot of psychological, excuse me, psychological changes can happen. So our heart beat is way faster. Uh, we can sweat. Just a lot of our body, our bodies react to um, the experiences that we face physically. Um, our bodies react in different ways. So when we sense our bodies reacting, it's up to us to seek help um, in order to transcend through trauma. But we have to first acknowledge trauma. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. If you don't even acknowledge that you have experienced something traumatic or that you're going through something traumatic, um, it's hard for us to transcend. Yeah. And so identifying trauma then, right? So, Terrence, you, you brought up some good points, like uh, the, the physical response, right, the biological response, the, the sweating, the, the different things. What are some other ways for me to say, Okay, this this was a traumatic experience for me. This, this is really having an effect on me that I don't like, or that's or that's uh, limiting me, right, in, in certain ways. Yeah, and just like Hannah said, when you start to the key thing, I think is awareness. Mm -hmm. So you noticing what's going on, uh, not just within your mind as far as what you're thinking, and not being aware of behavior such as uh, how it's impacting your relationships with other people or how you interact with other people, but your awareness on 
what's going on with my body. So if I know that my heart is starting to beat a little faster, I can take a, a minute to and acknowledge that, oh, this is going on in my body, what's happening right now? So it's all about being aware and acknowledging and then taking a moment to really think about what's going on right now in this moment that's causing my body to react. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we go on autopilot and we don't really think about what's going on with our bodies, Mm -hmm. right? We just automatically keep going, keep going. And that goes back to maybe that um, when we talked about in the culture episode, that work hustle culture, I just got to keep going. No matter what's going on, no matter how this impacts me, I got to keep going. So I think that's very important to be aware of what's going on, not just with your mind, not just with how your behaviors are interacting with other people, but also aware of what's going on with your body. Mm-hmm. And once you have that awareness, now you can start, you get so much more power to understand what's going on to transcend, start transcending that trauma. All sure. right. Yeah, and then in identifying um, trauma, there's also different types of trauma. So there's acute trauma, which is Mm. quick and um, instant. There is chronic trauma, which means this is a situation that's ongoing, and um, there may there it may last for a longer period of time, such as months or years. And then there's complex trauma. I know you're more informed about that, but um, complex trauma, to my knowledge, is different layers of trauma adding on. Yeah, and and, and when you think about complex trauma, it could be things like you know, you know discrimination. It can you know race based. Um, Trauma, things like that, is it's more of not just a specific event, but a mm-hmm. series of events that compound on top of each other mm. that make trauma complex, mm-hmm. right? And when we, when you're working with complex trauma, you got to really take a deep dive into these different you know aspects of what's causing it, how long it's been going on for, and things like that. So you're absolutely correct. And some types of trauma that people don't often realize is, for example, domestic violence. That can be trauma, a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Uh, Recently, we know about the bridge collapsing in Baltimore. That is a traumatic experience, um, not only for the nation, but more importantly, for those families and individuals that witnessed that in Baltimore. Um, A chronic illness can also be some level of trauma if you don't have the Mm. proper support and resources to manage it. I'm going to throw out another one. Throw them out. All right. It's called vicarious trauma. Mm-hmm. Vicarious trauma. Spell so what that, I, I, ain't, I ain't no dictionary, <laughs> but I know what it means, and I'm, I can explain that. <laughs> but what it means is, I, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. The bridge. Mm-hmm. I saw videos of the bridge collapsing, the ship hitting, the bridge collapsing, the cars falling in the water. Mm. I live nowhere near Baltimore. But if I, every time I go over a bridge, I start to have a trauma response, meaning my heart heart starts mm-hmm. racing. Um, I start to sweat, right? Uh, racing thoughts, different things like that. Guess what just happened? I was indirectly impacted by a traumatic event that was experienced by someone else. Mm. That's what vicarious trauma is. So mm. you don't have to directly experience it, but you just seeing second it hand. happened secondhand, mm. you can actually be traumatized from that particular experience. Now, so I'm not saying, you know, me personally, but that's just an example. Now, after watching the bridge collapse, if you have an issue with driving over bridges and you become real anxious and things like that, then next thing you know, you're experienced by that trauma. Mm. So, yep. I feel like avoidance is like an, the 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 evil of uh, of trauma, <laughs> right? The evil of traumatic experiences. I know mm-hmm. when I felt like I was going through a traumatic experience, I feel like avoidance, like putting it off, right, was um, was really detrimental to me. Um, you know, it, 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 I wasn't allowed to be present with it, right, mm-hmm. so that I could address it, so I could yeah. assess it, right. And understand myself in those in that moment, and even afterwards, right? Even afterwards, because uh, you know you, things stick with you sometimes, mm-hmm. and you and you just think about things, think on things. Even afterwards, when I was assessing it, um, still I think that there might have been a fear there, right? That was uh, blocking me from being present with it, um, so that I could really understand myself in that moment, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I, I think that's a I think that's a theme as well yeah. is is uh, being able to be present and communicating, right? Mm -hmm. How do you help people to, um, you know, as you're talking through things with them, how do you help them to talk out their trauma? Is that an important part, I would say, of transcending your trauma, first of all? Being able to talk it out and communicate it to yourself and 
if people are having challenges with that, how do you help them do that? Yeah, well, I, I can think of two things. One is the reason why people choose to avoid um, identifying and acknowledging that they they have survived trauma mm-hmm. um, or that they're currently going through trauma. Most people, in my experience, avoid it because they're not ready for the feelings and the emotions that come with uh, facing that traumatic experience. And I can think of... Uh, I can think of, in my personal life, two traumatic experiences I went through um, a couple years apart. The first time, I didn't have the resources and the support around me. I felt like, okay, if I face this event in front of me, I'm going to crumble. Mm. The second time, years later, after I've been to therapy and after I have more support and resources and coping mechanisms, I, I was more willing to face face the traumatic experience and face whatever consequences that came with it because I'm more equipped now. Um, so I feel like a lot of people avoid facing facing an, an experience because they don't want to f- process or deal with the emotions that come with it. Um, but to answer your second question, what I instruct people to do when they don't want to necessarily talk through their trauma is to journal their trauma out. Mm. So journal, you know, what are you feeling right now? Journal the details that you remember from that experience. Journal how you felt during that experience and how it makes you feel now. Um, and then, you know, even journal, what did she do before to cope? What do you want to do to cope? Um, and how can, how, and once I understand somebody's feelings through their through journaling, I'm able to step in and help navigate them to that success. So you have them journal it and uh, go through it with you. Go through mm-hmm. it. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And again, I know this isn't a science class, but I'm still gonna drop some more stuff about the brain. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, when you go, th- when you really, and I, I do this with my clients so that they can understand that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Mm-hmm. That your body mm-hmm. is automatically doing these things because mm-hmm. that's how it's built to survive. Wrong so with that's you. why I always try to educate them on some of the science I've learned behind this. Mm-hmm. And some of the science is this mm-hmm. when you experience a traumatic event, your brain is starting to do all, like I said, all these other functions to try to keep you safe. But there's one part of your brain that shuts down, Mm -hmm. and that's the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for critical thinking and understanding and language. That's Mm -hmm. just down. That's just down. Mm Decision-making. Right, and decision-making. So now when people say, when you ask somebody, hey, what happened? I don't know. Mm -hmm. They legit can't tell you because they don't know, Mm -hmm. right? Because that part of the brain that was supposed to make those connections and understand and critical thinking Mm decision-making is pretty much shut offline so these other parts of your brain can function to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. So I say that because you mentioned language they might not have the language mm-hmm. to explain it mm-hmm. right because they don't know how what happened or they they don't know how to verbalize what happened because that part of the brain is offline so what i do is there's a different types of therapy that's out there that doesn't necessarily have to be um talk therapy mm-hmm. right and what i mean by that is um there's experiential therapies out there where you, instead of talking through it and reliving it, you kind of allow your brain to, does a, do, to do its natural work and process through it like it should have done in the first place to then show you exactly what happened in it. Mm-hmm. And those therapies, is, uh, it's like EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. Uh, there's another one, internal family systems therapy. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I got training in both those. And it's an experiential therapy, not meaning you experience um, processing instead of verbally talking through it. Mm-hmm. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And Terrence, you mis- mentioned a really good point that when we experience something traumatic, um, part of our brain just completely turns off. And one coping mechanism to help that um, is breathing. Breathing is so essential to our bodies when we're experiencing something traumatic um, or even when we're thinking about a traumatic experience we've been through. Breathing exercises um, allow our bodies to relax and more brain, excuse me, more oxygen to go to our brains. So one strategy I even teach some of my clients is the five finger breathing technique. So you just basically hold your hand out and with your other hand, you touch the base of your finger and then you inhale as you go up your finger and then you slowly exhale as you come down. So I'll give an example. And if you're experiencing something, whether it's in the work workplace, um, in your personal lives, at home, 
Um, even if you're experiencing like a natural disaster at a time, you can put your hands wherever, underneath the desk, above the desk, behind your back, and you can just practice those breathing techniques just to bring more oxygen to your brain and to calm our nervous systems down so that we're able to better make better decisions during um, that situation mm-hmm. and eventually transcend from that trauma. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed of that. I got a little stuff I do, I promise. <laughs> I got a little stuff I do to get, get me through moments. So yeah. I'm telling you. Um and it, it might be something simple, man. I might look, I might look to to the corner of my eye or something like that, right? But it'll get me it'll it'll keep my focus, right? It'll it'll bring me back sometimes. Yeah. Um And that's yeah. that's you mentioned it. You said exactly uh perfectly. It brings you back. Bring me back. So what, what she described is what they call like a grounding technique. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to bring you back into the present moment. So she gave you an example um, of one. And breathing is a very uh, helpful tool um, with mindfulness as mm-hmm. well. So mindfulness is, again, a grounding technique to bring you back. And uh, what happens is, and I'll get like, um, when you experience, uh, when you're going through like EMDR or internal family systems or experiential therapy, you might have some type of physical response so uh, in your body because, again, your body is thinking about the trauma or processing through the trauma. So you can do some of these grounding techniques to bring you back in the moment to help relax your body. And with, you know, things like EMDR, IF, uh, internal family systems with IFS, it's, it can help with a lot of different issues, whether that's mm-hmm. things in, you know, the community that you experience, whether that's, you know, PTSD from combat veterans and things like that. And um, what, the, again, what the process for EMDR specifically is using this bilateral stimulation. So pretty much something like this. So it means I'm using the right side or the left side of my brain mm-hmm. to really to mm. process, to connect and process through what happened, right? And with that bilateral stimulation, you're helping your brain does what it naturally is supposed to do. But since you experienced a traumatic event, there was like a, a cutoff to where it couldn't finish processing. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how like a short, very short, condensed version of how EMDR works. You use the bilateral stimulation to connect the left brain and right brain in order to process through therapies and traumas. And if you get overwhelmed or, or triggered, you can use grounding techniques just like mm-hmm. Hannah demonstrated. This is totally outside of um, outside of this, but do y'all ever deal with uh, people or deal with children who've been diagnosed or may be diagnosed with ADHD, ADD? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, yes. Do, do they do they do things similar to that grounding techniques like that to bring them back? I think. I'm just wondering. I'm sorry. Yeah. From my experience, individuals that have ADD and ADHD, they cope um, with their condition by stimulating their bodies in order to um, release some of that energy that they're feeling inside. So if their mind is racing a a thousand thoughts per minute or if their heartbeat is going very fast, they're going to, like you said, Terrence, express that on the outside. So their fingers might, you know, might fiddle. Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of students or clients use like fidget toys or even tap their pencils. Um, so I do. They they mm-hmm. express it. <laughs> they express it in some um, physical physical manner. Um, and what's so important is to teach them how to express that feeling on the inside, that anxiety on the inside, in a healthy way. So one healthy. Um, mechanism is like a fidget toy Mm -hmm. so if a student is easily distracted in class and um becoming a distraction maybe their teacher can offer them a fidget toy just to help you know them calm down some and refocus on the matter at hand okay sorry y'all i had to take (laughs) that that just came up in my mind but i'm so i'm curious um how does someone let people know that they are dealing with trauma, or is it even healthy for them to let people know that they're dealing with trauma? And in the context of if I am someone who I'm, I don't feel like I'm available for you right now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or I notice that um, that I'm just not present in these moments, and I want to be able to help with what people are asking for, but I'm going through something right now, right? I'm, I'm dealing with my trauma. I'm trying to transcend, trying to go beyond my trauma. But I'm, I'm I'm limited, right, by my trauma in in this instance, and I want to be my best self for this person. How do how does someone let people know that they are dealing with that trauma? Is that even healthy, or is there another way that they that they could that they could say it, right? 
Yeah. I think first you have to be aware yourself that you're dealing with something that's okay. traumatic and what about a particular situation is causing it to be traumatic because once you're able to understand it, you can better try to communicate it. Even if you don't want to tell them exactly what's going on, you can simply say and use uh, I statements. You know, I'm feeling real overwhelmed right now. Mm. Can we uh, talk about this later? Mm -hmm. Again, you're saying I, I, you're adding on how you feel, and then you're offering, you know, an alternative. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm upset right now. I'm feeling very uh, angry right now. Um, is it possible that you can just give me a minute? Mm -hmm. So, again, you can also add in the reason why I'm getting frustrated right now because I don't feel like you're listening to me. Now, when you do mm -hmm. that, now that part of I don't feel like you're listening to me, that's what's triggering you. That's the traumatic part because you probably started remembering places or times or experiences where you didn't feel heard, and now that's part of, that's causing the traumatic reaction, mm. right? So when you start to become aware of your own system, your own body, you can start to communicate to people not just how you feel, but why you feel mm. that way. So they can now become a better, get a better understanding of how to help you. Meaning, if I know that you're feeling frustrated that um, because I'm not listening or you feel unheard, now I can start trying to let you know, I hear you, I understand you, mm -hmm. I'm right here. Mm -hmm. That then provides you reassurance. Now, I'm not saying that people always have to, you know, give you reassurance or provide reassurance. But when you know someone's hurting for whatever reason, you can help with that by giving them what they need or helping mm -hmm. them cope with what they need. Yeah, and it's strongly suggested that you do reach out to your loved ones or the people that you love and trust um, when you're going through something traumatic just so that they can offer more support, but also so that they can um, extend some level of grace to you. You know, if, for example, if um, I'm working at my church and I have five different five different responsibilities and due to my mental um, condition or, you know, I might be dealing with anxiety or depression related to a traumatic experience that I'm going through during that time, I need to communicate to others, hey, I, I really don't have the energy. Or I really don't have um, the, the tools that I need right now to perform these five duties. Can we cut, you know, can, can you all give me some grace and cut some slack for me? Um, and so I would say that it, it is important to reach out to those around you to communicate if you're going to a, through a traumatic experience. But it's also important to give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. When you're going through something traumatic, um, we can often be very critical and very harsh on ourselves, um, and sometimes we can be our, our biggest enemy. So if you're dealing with something traumatic, like you said earlier, mindfulness, grounding techniques are very important. Um, giving yourself grace can look like just a bubble bath every week, um, doing yoga, doing more grounding exercises, walking outside. I know one technique is even walking outside with your shoes off. So that just grounds you and brings you back to who you are as a person. Yeah. And when you think about, um, you know, trauma and like you said, uh, us giving ourselves grace, think of it like this. If you one of the things like people do is they'll say, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they feel um, ashamed of how they feel because of what happened. Mm -hmm. Think about if the more I stop, if I have a particular job and somebody stops me from doing a job or try to stop me from doing a job, I'm probably going to work harder to get that job done, especially if there's a goal that I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's think of your emotions as this. If you're experiencing anger, frustration, sadness, doesn't matter their emotion, and you just try to stop it, like I, instead of work through it and accept it, but you try to stop it, your anger, your frustration, or your emotions is going to intensify because it's trying to let you know that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, it has a job. The job is to let you know something's wrong, right? And now it's trying to got to work harder to let you know we need to make a change. We need mm -hmm. to make a change. It becomes louder, louder, and more intensive and intensive. Mm -hmm. But what if you just took a moment to say, I am feeling angry. I am feeling upset. Or I am sad about this situation. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging it. And watch how your body shifts. There's literally a shift in, in your body's physical sensations because now you've accepted it instead of it having to work so hard for you to actually listen. Mm -hmm. And that's really part of how some of these therapies can work is simply acknowledging your feelings instead of trying to change them because our feelings are provide us with information and they're trying to communicate, but we don't listen a lot of times, especially with trauma. Yeah, what I'm hearing you say is that often when we go through trauma, we try to fight those emotions mm -hmm. instead of just facing them. Mm -hmm. And that fight response, oh my my goodness it can it can 
be so detrimental in the long um when you think about like the long run matter of fact i mean instead of just facing those emotions and dealing with those emotions um so yeah 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 they, they say uh that's the body's uh survival mm-hmm. is uh fight or flight right yeah um I guess the op- the opposite of survival is what, like resilience, mm-hmm. right? So those are that's what we want to build, right? It's really mm-hmm. that resilience. Mm-hmm. The body that's gonna be its uh its go to every time. It's either fight or or flight. Either one, either one. I th- I think um something one of y'all said was really um important for me too. Uh, something I noticed is understanding other people's level of trauma. What's traumatic to someone else might not be traumatic to me. Exactly. I and I don't want to downplay what right. you've been through, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's important in relationships. Sometimes we do that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that that ain't nothing, you know. I done been through that. You, you right? Know, you especially in our that. community. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially in the black, not just relationships, right? But um, our friendships, just in our culture. We talked about culture last episode. In our culture, in our communities, you know. Um, but you hadn't walked in that person's shoes, right? right? Mm-hmm. So you can't really speak too much about their walk. Right? Mm-hmm. One important value is to has, have empathy. And like you said, um, yeah. something that was traumatic to person A may not be nearly as traumatic to person B. Mm-hmm. However, we have to have that level of empath- empathy to understand someone else's struggles and challenges. Um, something else that I think of is just being able to... I kind of lost my train of thought. Um so someone else's trauma may not be your trauma, but just being able to understand and have empathy um, and extend that level of grace. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, be intentional about that, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, uh, we got to be there for you. We in this thing together. Right. Exactly. We in this thing together, man. Yep. Yeah, and understanding, okay, I, I I love talking about trauma, by the way, but... Go ahead, bro. You got it. You when got you start to understand your own trauma you understand how you show up in relationships or show up at work or show up in the world you also um, start to understand how you relate to other people and how things other people do may impact you Mm. that's by understanding your trauma now allow if you're in a relationship guess what you got to bring into it you got to bring in the other person's experiences Mm -hmm. and traumas and things like that so not Mm -hmm. only do you need to understand yourself first you need to understand theirs too to understand why they react or respond in certain ways that impacts the relationship and so i use um i use this uh, as a venn diagram Okay. Right, mm-hmm. and when That's I compare and contrast, yeah. Okay. So pretty much a Venn diagram. Take I have back. one circle, another <laughs> circle, and there's an interaction. I mean, a, a intersection in the middle, right? Gotcha. But I add a third circle. Mm. So one circle, another circle, another circle. And what I by doing that, I start to say to understand your own trauma. One circle is your mom. One circle is your dad. The third circle at the bottom is you, right? So now your mom. You put your her experiences, his childhood experiences, qualities mm-hmm. you like, qualities you don't like. Same thing for dad. And now what you're starting to see is mom's experiences intersect with dad's experiences. Mom experiences intersect with your experiences. Dad's experiences intersect with yours. And all three of them intersect together. Mm-hmm. So that means I got to understand my mom's trauma. I got to understand my dad's trauma or experiences to understand my own trauma and experiences. And when you start to map it out that way, it becomes like a like a model now that you can say, hey, look, I'm starting to do some of this work. And this is what I found out. Mm-hmm. And it all starts from what? A conversation, right? Right. So now we gotta start talking about these things because when we don't talk about it and suppress it, we just now have behaviors, mm-hmm. responsive, reactive behaviors. And when you have reactive behaviors without some type of story behind it, the only thing you know is that person's angry, right. that person's always sad, that person's always you know depressed, but you don't understand the story behind it. Mm-hmm. So we have to understand not just our own trauma stories, but our parents, our uh, grandparents, if we can, and to understand our story so we can understand other people's story as well. Yeah, and just to feedback off of that, I remember my train of thought that I was going earlier is that um, two people can experience different 
experiences and one can be traumatic to person A and person B. It is not um, traumatic. However, we have to validate those experiences. So back to the Venn diagram that Terrence was talking about. If our mom expresses us to us something they she went through during her childhood um, and our dad expresses something that he went through during his childhood, we have to validate those experiences and recognize that that may have been traumatic to them. However, it might not be traumatic to us and we might not even have gone through similar situations um, to understand the level of trauma that they endured during that time. However, we have to validate their experiences in order to understand them more as a person. So I'm just focused on the word validation because mm -hmm. the opposite of that is just completely being ignorant and ignoring someone's um, traumatic experiences. Yeah. Man, you know, I think, uh, now you make me think about something, Terrence. You know, uh, Sometimes young young black boys, right, who uh, and you hear this in rap music, who don't have a dad, mm -hmm. they say the streets raise me, and it makes me think about whoever you, whoever has a part in you being you, mm -hmm. right. You have to understand that trauma. Yep. Mm -hmm. If they had a part in you, it, it may be you may have, um, I don't know, just just a mentor or somebody, mm -hmm. right. Um, a father figure, a mother father figure. figure, yeah, right. Some type of um, caregiver. You you have to understand their trauma too. Mm -hmm. Very possibly, I feel yep. like, and it, and, it, and it may. I I kept dwelling on that of a uh, young black boy saying like the streets raised me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Most of them don't understand where um, a lot of that trauma comes mm -hmm. from. Nope. That they get in from in the streets. Yeah. Right. Um, even when you get into, we gonna get too far. In, but when you get into beefs. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that, where that even originated, <laughs> yep. where that even started at, I just know I'm in it, mm -hmm. yep. and I'm giving it my all, right? right? And whatever activities, right, that go mm -hmm. on in my circle, you know, I don't know where it started, I'm just in it. Right. I'm indoctrinated in it, I, I just fell into it, and not understanding the trauma that that uh, that comes that comes behind it. Yeah. Um, this is like, who, whoever has had a part, you know, and, and me being who I am, right, and, and, and raising me, I got to pay attention to. Um, and then I also think about, man, not really, you know, sometimes we see things in people and uh, it, it may it may be trauma. It may come from tra trauma, right? But I think we have to be careful about um, just, just judging people in general, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, because of what we see in them. We don't know what nobody's been through. Mm -hmm. Um could be uh, something in the way you know people rub us wrong, and they might, you know, it might not even be uh, meant that way. It could be because of uh, something they've been through, right? Mm -hmm. And so, given that grace, even when it's uh, even when we don't know that that it's coming from a traumatic place, right? Right. But just knowing that it could be right, mm -hmm. giving people that grace, I yeah. think is uh, it's really important. It really is. Important. So when we understand and when we validate whether it's our own traumatic experience or someone else's traumatic experience, what do we do with that understanding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the understanding creates awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And that awareness then allows me to, like like uh, Josh put, um, communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can know what's going on and why. Now I can communicate it so that I can feel understood. So now if I now I feel understood, guess what just happened? A connection. Mm -hmm. And like I keep saying, we always want to connect with people. But mm -hmm. the disconnection comes from when you don't understand what's going on. You just react off of what I'm doing or yeah, what I'm instinct. saying, but mm -hmm. not understanding what I'm why I'm doing or why I'm saying it. So I think ultimately understanding uh, builds awareness, which helps with communication, which then helps with connection. And I think as we transcend through trauma or transcend above um, whatever traumatic experience we've been through, we're able to, like you said, it builds some level of awareness, but we're also able to find purpose and meaning mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that journey or in that phase of life. Um, yeah. Back to the first, the experience I talked about earlier in the conversation about how I lost five people close to me within a very small period of time. I was able after the situation happened, I was able to look back and reflect on what did I learn during this situation, this time period in life? Uh, what, How did I grow as a person during that time in life? Or did I not grow at all? And why? Um, we're always able to grow in a cell and transcend from whatever traumatic experience True. we go through. Mm -hmm. But we just have to have those skills um, and we have to utilize those skills. Mm -hmm. 
you know, skills. Uh, run it back by me one more time. What are those skills? What are some of those Meditation, skills? grounding, That's mindfulness, right. going right. to therapy, uh, reaching out to your family and friends for support, joining mm-hmm. an organization. Put those things into practice. They may not have the impact that first time that it's going to have that fifth time. But as you put it in practice, you're perfecting it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have some grace, have some patience with yourself as you put those things in practice. But it's important to put those things in practice. Exactly. I would... Oh, you I would even suggest finding a book, and this is this is how professional help can help you. Um, I would suggest finding a book that relates to the experience that you're going through right now. If you're able to read a book um, from an individual that has more knowledge and more expertise in that area of whatever you're going through, you're able to connect more. Um, and there's other resources out here as well. Yeah. So, you know, to help with that whole connection piece, the communication piece, um, I developed a resource to help build those skills. Mm-hmm. And there are these cards right here, right? Yeah. Um, they're the black trauma cards. And black is actually an acronym. It stands for building language, awareness, connections, and knowledge. Mm. Because mm. I feel like um, people don't have the language to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. The language does not help you with the awareness. So you got to mm-hmm. have the awareness to help with the connections about where it came from, to help with the knowledge of how to move forward. Mm. So I made these uh, trauma cards, and what they do is they're, um, they have prompts, and then they have sub-prompts. The sub-prompts up under it is like a, a follow-up question to the original prompt, mm. right? So what it can be for your own self-discovery. You can use it to you know understand your partner. So it mm-hmm. could be for couples. Uh, it could be journal prompts. You know, the app gets you started with these different questions. And they're all based in... Um, a foundation of intergenerational trauma, mm-hmm. um, also with attachment theory, so how we connect with other people, and then also uh, some aspects of, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, internal family system, mm-hmm. which learns about inner parts work, right? So I've, I've combined all of them to make these cards to try to help people um, gain these different skills. Can you give an example of one of the cards, one yeah. of the prompts? I'll open them up. And where can, um, where can we locate these or purchase these cards? So they'll be on my website under the um, About Me page mm-hmm. on my website. And that website is www.missingpiecescounselingllc.com. So um, one is, let's see, which one do I want a lot? During Conflicts. Do you worry about people leaving or withdrawing from you? Mm, that highlights that attachment style. Is that, see, there you go. That's, that's where that one came from, yeah. attachment. And so after you answer that first question, what, it goes to another one, like what past experiences make you worried about this? Mm-hmm. When was the first time this experience happened? If you could go back, what would you change about the experience? And how has this impacted your behavior? So this started to really get you to understand not just about the event, but where did this event start from and how did it impact you and what do you need to do to move forward? Wow, that's very important. Um, One example that I have of that relating to that card is that I was dating someone before and every time I got ready to like leave their house or leave the date um they started getting very anxious and like very clingy I'm like where is this coming from and then after um we processed it together they dealt with you know um an anxious attachment style, and mm-hmm. that came from their childhood, from their mom just randomly leaving out of the house and not coming back for days at a time, and they were forced to feed themselves or get themselves ready for um, for school. So after we were able to process that, they recognized that hey, that was a traumatic experience for me mm-hmm. growing up, and I'm and they never connected the two until we started talking about our current mannerisms and how we do and operate currently exactly it all starts from a conversation Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. communication so yeah i love it i love it y'all and we got to put action behind these transcending it's an action to to get through it to go beyond we got to put action um Mm -hmm. i heard a quote something uh laziness is the enemy of action Mm -hmm. um you know you you i mean you got a choice you know You, you you can you can be lazy and and not do anything or you can be proactive yeah you can be proactive um and you can uh, you can you can build your resilience, right? Mm-hmm. And as you go through things, you can you can look for ways to to, to go beyond to go beyond your trauma and, and and what's having these effects on you and, and limiting you. So I like 
I like how you said it's an action um, mm-hmm. because when you think of transcending or um, to transcend out of trauma, that that involves some type of action. And it reminds yeah. me of the motto that Nipsey Hussle, the late Nipsey Hussle, used to use about life is a marathon. You know, so whether you're making action um, – small steps at a time and you're being a turtle or whether that marathon is being completed on a rabbit level and you're just, you know, running at the end of the day, you have to have some type of action Mm -hmm. in order to get to um, your goal or your mission in life. Yep. Well, thank you all again for uh, tuning in with us. Did y'all have any, um, any, um, anything to leave us with uh, that y'all, y'all can think of right now? Are we good? I'm good. I just like to tell people um, when understanding trauma, probably understanding that it probably didn't start with you. Mm-hmm. Right. So this trauma that you're experiencing, um, it has a story behind it that that it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. So gosh. we can't really. Um, oh, I'm not going to say can't, but you kind of need to understand that um, you can't internalize what happened mm-hmm. as your fault. Mm. It has a story behind it that didn't start with you and this internalization of um, it's my fault. That's what kind of feeds the trauma and feeds yeah. the negative um, negative thought patterns that we have. So really understanding it didn't start with me, but it can end with me. Mm-hmm. So I like you know, telling my clients that. And not becoming a victim of mm-hmm. the trauma, but becoming a survivor of it. Yes. Mm. So that's our goal, to become a survivor of whatever life has thrown our way um, instead of becoming a victim. Mm-hmm. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, May is still that. Mental Health Awareness Month, so. That's yeah. right. Advocate, that's right. seek help, support each other. I, I might have a problem with that, too, um, too, Terrence. Maybe I think sometimes things I've gone through, um, I feel like I um, maybe had a important role in mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe in my trauma is there ever an instance where maybe um, where I where my role in my trauma is significant it's all you you do sometimes play a role in your trauma mm-hmm. but let's think about this where did your behavior from that role in that trauma come from mm-hmm. okay so yes what I did made this happen, but what was the reason I did what I did, That's right? So now when you ask that particular question, now I have to do some, again, inner work to figure out what was I trying to achieve and what was I trying to uh, get from that. So I'll give you an example. Mm. Uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll play off Hannah's mm-hmm. example. So he was feeling every time you try to leave, he become real clingy, mm-hmm. you know, right here. And so now if you... That could push uh, unintentionally push you away because mm-hmm. I don't want no clingy man. So you start, I, I ain't got to deal with this. So mm-hmm. you leave, right? So that's one person I'll leave. Now he's in another relationship. They leave. Mm-hmm. Get into another relationship. They leave. So he starts to view relationships as traumatic because everybody just leaves me. Mm. Because when they're about to leave or I become clingy because mm-hmm. I feel like they're not going to come back. But now that's the behavior, clingy, right? But why did he become clingy? Right. Because um, he started to experience something where he felt like mom was never going to come back. So he started to become clingy to try to prevent that from happening, which then led to another tr- potential traumatizing event. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you, he played a role in it. But his role came from a place of I was trying to prevent something else from happening. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you breaking that down for yeah. me, brother. Appreciate that. So let's, let's continue, y'all. Let's continue, y'all, out there to examine ourselves. To, to yes. look at ourselves, right, mm-hmm. and take some action, right? Because uh, when we look at ourselves, we can, hopefully, we can uh, keep some of these things from happening, mm-hmm. right? Uh, keep from falling into the same traps, okay, and, and whatnot. So, uh, thank y'all again for yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Take yeah, just just want to encourage you all to take care of yourself. Um, continue you. to seek resources, seek support, but it is our responsibility to take care of ourselves. So please continue to. Um, do some self care, meditation, yoga, mindfulness, so that we are able to take care of ourselves. That's it. That's it. We well, appreciate y'all again. Um, yes. Please, please share with us your thoughts, uh, comment, share with us on the on the uh, reels and on the videos. Please share them with us. Please subscribe to Speaking with Gravity on mm-hmm. YouTube. Uh, follow on um, Instagram, Facebook, and the like. TikTok. TikTok. All of them. Mm-hmm. We everywhere. Um, yeah, and uh, keep keep looking out for those updates that that we have out there on social media. Until the next time, take care of yourself. Take I'm care, Joshua. Y'all. You can find me at uh, 
Joshua underscore uh, Be Impactful on Instagram and other, other sites. So. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. And you can find me on Instagram at Hannah Elise T underscores. And you can find me on Instagram at Terrence underscore Dawkins. All right. Take care. See you soon. Bye, y'all. Peace.